Hey guys, Hayden here again from Alarm System Store, and today I actually have kind of a fun little video um, I'm hoping you all enjoy, but we're actually going to be making our own uh, do-it-yourself water sensor for alarm systems. Um, and as you can see, most of these components are just things that you may just have lying around. All I have here is uh, Alka-Seltzer tablets, um, a clothespin, um, I think that's what it's called, I can never remember, a yeah, clothespin, and then uh, some wire, and then a hot glue gun to make everything stick together, and real quick, I'll kind of show you the premise of what I'm going to be doing, and then I'll come back show the final product, and then um, after that we'll talk about how I did it, and how I made it um, the way I did, and I'm going to try and get fancy with it, we'll see what happens, but uh, baseline, I, I mean... By default, this sort of sensor is going to be incredibly cheap to make, and uh, honestly, you don't even need to go through half the steps that I'm going to. I just want to make it as nice and as cool as we can, so we'll see what happens. So, if you guys watched our uh, previous videos about um, like wiring things in series and parallel, I talked about how the system watches zones. So, um, the alarm system, all it does is it provides a little bit of a current through the wires that you connect to it. Other than that, it doesn't actually know what is attached at the other end. All it knows is whether it's seeing an open or closed loop and whether or not that loop open or closes. And the reason I bring that up is because that's how we're able to just make our own sensor because it doesn't, the system itself doesn't care what's attached. It just wants to see the proper zone loop depending on how the panel's programmed. So I'm actually going to show you how to use this method to create your own water sensor in both a normally closed format and normally open. Um, and just quick demo, uh, basically what's going to happen is if we take our paper or our clothespin put our Alka-Seltzer tablet in there. Uh, what's gonna happen is if we drop this in water, the tablet's gonna melt and it's gonna close this clothespin. And all we're gonna do with the wire is we're gonna attach the wire in places where it will react to the pin closing. So for example, I can show the normally closed setup very easily. So if you mount these wires onto this clothespin with the tablet in there and have the wires touching and you can you know use terminals on the end of your wires I mean you, you can get as crazy and as bougie with it as you want or whatever word you want to use but I mean in essence all we're doing is connecting these two wires here at the top and then back at the panel we tell the system that this is a normally closed water sensor and then whenever tablet pulls out, it pulls those wires apart, and it opens the loop, and the system's going to go off because that zone was triggered because it saw the change in the loop status. So as you can see right off the bat, creating a normally closed water sensor from scratch is, is almost the easiest thing you'll ever do. Um, literally, you don't even have to use hot glue. You can just take like some double-sided tape or you know whatever you want to do. Basically, all you gotta do is attach these wires there so that they're just barely touching, and that way when the clothespin closes, it pulls those wires apart. And the opposite is true for um, if we wanna create a normally open or EOL zone, um, which is actually my finished product. I'm gonna create an EOL resistored zone, and that way it can be supervised on top of just being, what, a couple dollars worth of uh, pieces here. But anyway, um, if we do a normally open, all we have to do is create the opposite kind of loop, where when the closed pin closes, it makes the two wires touch each other. And once we have the basics of that figured out, we just have to attach a resistor so that it closes the loop normally and provides resistance. And whenever the wires touch, it skips that resistance and shows at the panel that that zone has been triggered. So let's get to it. So for the normally closed setup, I don't want to talk too much during this, but basically all I'm doing is bending the wire so that uh, one catches on the other and slips apart easily when the pressure is applied. And then I just take the hot glue and attach the wires to the end of the clothespin, as I said, and there you go. 
That's all there really is to it on the normally closed. It's pretty simple, but uh, I'll let you guys watch. All right, so I am back and this is gonna be our setup for a normally closed DIY water sensor. So and basically all I've done here is I took the two wires that we're gonna use for our zone, put one side on one end of the back side of the clothespin and the other side on the other. And now if you'll watch, you see how the wires touch in there? That's closing our loop. It's just the two wires touching, shows closed. Now, if I pull, or you know, if this dissolves, or I pull it out here, you can watch the two wires. Oh. Get it in focus there. If I pull the two prongs, there you go. It just pulled it straight apart. Now there's an open loop. Now the system says, oh, well, that zone was triggered. So now it is setting off an alarm for water. So, that's by far the easiest way you can do this. Uh, normally closed loops are available on every alarm system, but literally all it takes is setting a zone definition for a 24 hour water zone and then setting it as a normally closed loop. And there you go. And I don't know, that didn't even take me five minutes. I created my own water sensor. And uh, now I am gonna go a bit further. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna do a normally open EOL zone. So I'm gonna cut all this off and I'm gonna put a resistor on there and I'm gonna make these wires instead of pulling apart, I'm gonna make them touch down here at the bottom. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna do that a little bit fancily. So we'll see how it goes, but you guys can already see the concept. Like it, it takes almost nothing to create an open or closed loop. Um, so if you're thinking about getting water sensors or if you think you might need some, but you just don't know which ones to get or whatever, make your own that's literally all it takes the only maintenance you'll ever have to do is just swapping out a new uh, alka-seltzer tablet anytime that this gets stripped i'm going to clean this up and then i'm going to do the normally open and i'll be back in a sec so i'm skipping forward just a little bit here i kind of wanted to show just one side of this so that um, i can explain the logistics basically but um, as you can see there i've just soldered on to the front of the contact i stuck the wire through the back and that just kind of helped hold it in place while i was soldering on the front of the clothespin piece and then i took the resistor and i soldered it on there as well um, I'm going to clean that up some, got a couple little burrs sticking off there, but everything is tight and in place and once that is cleaned up it will give us a much larger surface area for touching the other side of the contact um, instead of just using a wire and there are numerous ways to do this, like you, you could even use pennies or anything metal, basically all you got to do is make one wire touch another and any sort of metal will allow that electricity to be conducted. So um, use your imagination if you wanna make your own style, but this is the way I did it because I like tinkering with stuff and I like to solder stuff whenever I have a chance. So that's what I did. Um, but anyway, I'll go ahead and skip to doing the other side of this and that way you guys can see it. I'm gonna try and zoom in while I do it, but Overall, um, I'm just doing the camera and all that by myself, so hopefully um, you guys get a good shot of what I'm doing. But anyway, here you go. So I missed a little bit here, um, camera was up a little bit too high, but basically all I'm doing is adding enough solder to uh, get the resistor stuck in there, um, and then I file it down just a little bit, and then that's, that's really all I do. So I'll be right back with the finished product.
All right, guys, so I am finished. Um, so I'll show you the, the contact real quick. <coughs> so basically, as you can see, I have our wire attached and here's our resistor. Um, that's soldered into uh, the two little contact pads I made. And as it is, I've filed down the solder to where there's a tiny, tiny little gap in there. Um, I doubt you'll be able to see it on the camera, but the contact pads are not touching right now. And we do have the uh, Alka-Seltzer tablet in here. So basically we're just gonna try it. Um, I do have this hooked up to a system and I got a cup of water here we're gonna try it with. So let me set up the zone real quick and then we'll drop this in and we'll see how it goes. All right, so I finished the programming. I just set it up as a 24 hour flood zone. Um, and technically, system is ready to arm. So it is seeing the resistor and it is also seeing um, that the circuit itself is not open right now. So uh, with this being a 24 hour flood zone, we could just drop it into the water, but I'll go ahead and arm the system. And that way, I'll just show that the system is good to go, that this is not causing any troubles. I do have a couple trouble conditions. I didn't set the date and time and I don't have a battery hooked up. So gonna have a couple troubles just present period, but they will not affect our operation. So I'll be back when the system arms and we'll drop it in the water and see what happens. All right, so we are good to go other than the trouble conditions that I mentioned. So let's just go ahead and drop this in and we'll see what happens. Uh, here, oh, here, I'll put this where we can see the tablet dissolving. So Alka-Seltzer is pretty quick to dissolve. So hopefully this won't take much time at all. But once that clothespin has enough uh, pressure on it from the Alka-Seltzer weakening from dissolving, it will pinch through. And once it pinches through, it will set that off. Now. And keep in mind, it is going to take a little bit longer than if you're using, you know, like a, a legitimate, you know, water sensor. Hey guys, kind of cutting over myself a little bit here, but uh, what I was trying to say here is that you can use smaller pieces of Alka-Seltzer to uh, decrease your trigger time. Actually, because I was blabbering, missed the alarm going off right there. So I'm just going to cut to where I realize it. Oh, well, there we go. Our system is in alarm now, so we can remove that. And as you can see, the Alka-Seltzer has completely dissolved um, and it touched our contact pads and we have an alarm condition. So it worked exactly as intended. Um, so there's nothing really else to say. I mean, I, I had fun making this thing. So if you guys think any of this is cool and you wanna you know, create some water sensors for yourself, you are more than welcome to do so. And what's really nice, if you create a setup like this, um, all I gotta do is dry this off and then I can stick another Alka-Seltzer tablet in there and it's ready to go for another round. Um, so open this back up and since I disarmed the system, system is ready to arm again. Now if I touch it, it's gonna say the system's an alarm. So basically uh, if you are using one of these, keep in mind that if it touches while you're replacing the Alka-Seltzer or drying it off or whatever the case may be, your system will go back into alarm. So what might be easiest is disarming the system and then bypassing this sensor. And that way, even if it touches, it's not gonna set the system off while you have time to dry it off and put another Alka-Seltzer tablet in there. Uh, and like I was saying previously, you can do this with all sorts of different types of uh, materials. You don't have to use a closed pin and you don't have to use um, EOL resistors. Um, any sort of mechanism that is spring-loaded like that that will close on itself and allow you to touch two pieces of metal together. If you attach wires to those pieces of metal, when they make contact, that's what's going to trigger the system. So that's all I've done here. Um, as you can see, I'll try and get a better... Let me zoom in a little bit. Try and get a better shot. So. 
as you can see, I got the two wires coming in. They're going in through the back. Um, on a, I mean, I could have just hot glued them to the side right here or even just attached them right there on the side. Um, but I went a little bit further and soldered a resistor in there. So as you can see, my little metal connections there, uh, they are filed down a bit so that there's no additional uh, metal just poking out so that it can't touch each other. But uh, basically I just soldered uh, the resistor to those wires and that way it is constantly um, good EOL wise. And then whenever they touch, system goes into alarm. So pretty simple, pretty neat. Uh, I had fun making this thing. I, you could do it all sorts of ways. And if I think of any more that are convenient with what I have around here, uh, maybe making this even more uh, reliable somehow, some way, um, I'll do so. Uh, we're gonna try and figure out if we can do some other cool little projects like this. But uh, this is just a small little one that we came up with that was uh, pretty easy to do with what we had laying around. So I'll just have to find some other stuff that we have laying around and I'll see what else I can come up with. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, like and subscribe, uh, leave us a comment, tell us what you thought, and I will catch you guys on the next one.